Hi folks, I'm Hector Garcia. I'm an accountant and I use Excel every day. Excel has over 200 keyboard shortcuts. I've compiled for this video about 50, which are the ones I most frequently use. Now you can follow along by downloading the same Excel spreadsheet that I'm using for the examples that will also allow you to print a one page cheat sheet that contains all the shortcuts and the description of what each of the shortcut does. Very useful for you to print it and follow along as we go through this video. Now, if you work with financial data, accounting data, I strongly consider that you actually take my advanced course that helps you clean up your data, work faster, and learn more of these shortcuts. Now, take my course to become more effective at your job and to support my channel. The link to that course is down there in the description somewhere, so strongly consider doing that. Now, let's get on to the next shortcut. Let's start with Control F1, which will hide and show the ribbon on the top. It takes about 10% of the screen, so it's a lot of precious real estate when you're working with a lot of data. Control Alt Plus zooms in the worksheet. Control Alt Minus zooms out in the worksheet. Control S saves your current workbook. And the arrow keys can be used to select the cell to the right, to the left, down and up depending on which arrow you press but you could also hit tab to go to the next cell to the right shift tab to go to the previous cell to the left enter will go to the next cell down and then shift enter will go to the next cell up now hitting control and an arrow will take you to the last cell that has data so right now if i hit control right it will take me to the very last cell in the same row if I hit control down, it will take me to the very last cell in the column. If I hit control left, it will take me to the very first cell in the row. And then control up, it will take me to the first cell in that column. Now let's say I have this cell selected here. If I hold the shift key and click on the right arrow, it's going to select every cell adjacent to it. If I hold the same shift key and press the down arrow, it's gonna select all the cells adjacent to the current selected cells. Let's try that again. I'm gonna select just this one cell, click on the shift key, and then press down arrow three times, and then hold the shift key, press the right arrow three times, and notice how the rows and the columns adjacent to the selected columns are being selected. If I wanted to select the entire row, I would hit shift spacebar. If I wanted to select the entire column, I would hit control spacebar. Now, Control Shift Plus inserts a cell. Control Minus removes a cell. If I wanted to insert an entire column, I would hit Control Space Bar and then Control Shift Plus. That will insert an entire column. If I wanted to insert an entire row, I hit Shift Space Bar and then hit Control Shift Plus. If I wanted to remove the row, Control Minus. If I want to remove this column, I'll select the cell, hit Control Space Bar, and then Control Minus. If I wanted to select all the adjacent data to a cell that I have selected, so I'll click on this cell here, I'll hit Control A. Control A will select all the adjacent data to the current selected cell. If I hit Control A one more time, it will select all the cells from the entire worksheet. If I hit Control Home, it will take me to the very first cell that has information. If I hit Control End, it will take me to the very last cell that contains information. I'm going to hit Control Home, so I go to the beginning. If I hit Control Shift End, it will select all the data from the current selected cell. I'm going to select the last cell here manually. And then I'm going to hit Control Shift Home, and it will select all the data backwards adjacent to the current selected data. Now, with some of these larger data sets, manually scrolling up and down or using the scroll wheel in your mouse might take a very long time. So what you can do is, let's say you have this data selected, you can hit page down to go to the very next cell that's under the last visible cell. And you can keep hitting page down until you find what you're looking for. You can go up the same way by hitting page up to see the next cell above the last visible cell. Now if I do shift page down, it will actually select all the cells up to the last visible cell. And if I hit shift page up, it will unselect 
the, the cells that I just selected. However, if I select any data point here at random, and then from here I click Shift Page Up, it will select upwards up to the last visible cell. I'm going to zoom to move some of the columns past the visible zone. So I would have to scroll using the scroll bar left and right to see all the columns. So we can do similar functionality by hitting Alt Page Down will take me to the next column that's not visible, and Alt Page Up will take me backwards to the columns to the left. Now Control Page Up and Control Page Down will toggle across worksheets here in the bottom. And if I select any range, you will notice that automatically the cell in the top left will be the default selected cell. So if I wanted to toggle that, I would hit Control Period and notice it toggles every corner to the actual selected cell. Let's do a couple of exercises on copy and paste. I'm going to scroll here to the right and let's say for example that I wanted to duplicate this column over here. So I'll select any of the cells in it, hit Control Space Bar to select the entire column, then Control C on the keyboard to copy, then I would select the top cell in any of the columns that I want to paste into, and then I hit Control V on the keyboard and that will paste. However, notice that the information wasn't the same because if I look at the cell inside uh, the column that I was copying, notice that it is a formula, so when you copy and paste formulas, those formulas could get messed up. So one of the things that we can do, let me delete this real quick, is we can do copy and paste values. So I'm going to hit Control space bar here, Control C. Then I'm going to come up here and then instead of hitting Control V, I'm going to hit Control Alt V, which will open up Paste Special. Then I would hit V on the keyboard to go to values and then enter. And it will basically copy and paste just the values, not the formulas. Now, if I wanted to undo that action, I hit Control Z on the keyboard several times. I can go backwards and keep undoing. Or if I wanted to redo the undo, hit Control Y, and then I will go forwards on all the way, all the things that I undid. Now, F4 is a little bit different than Control Y. So, for example, let's say I'll be doing a copy and paste value. So, I'll try this again, Control C, come up here and hit Control Alt V, V enter and then I can select another column here and then press F4. What F4 does is it repeats the last action you have taken. Control Y is a little bit different because Control Y redoes something you undid. Now to edit the information inside of a cell, typically all you have to do is double click on the cell and then it becomes editable. But if you wanted to edit it without hitting a double click, you can simply just press F2 on the keyboard. This becomes uh, useful when you're not using the mouse and you're manually going up and down the arrows and selecting which cell you want to work with, you simply just press F2 and then you'll be able to change the numbers as you, as you please. Another interesting shortcut is, for example, let's say I wanted to insert the address under the person's name in here, but I want it all to be in the same cell. So if I come in here and press enter, it will save it and go into the cell under it. So if I wanted to do that, I would hit Alt Enter and what it will do is it will create a second line. So I can put the address in here, press Enter and you will notice now that this cell is a little bit thicker. It's double lined because it contains two pieces of information. Up here in the cell formula bar, I can actually click and drag that down to see multiple lines. So if I have any cells that contain more than one line, I can see it up here favorite shortcuts is to create a filterable table. So I can select any cell that contains data within a table, hit Control Shift L, and now you will notice on the top header, you will see a drop down menu that will now allow me to select which data points I would like to see in the table. So I can unselect them all and just pick two of them and then click OK, and it will narrow it down to just that. I can click on the same drop down menu, clear the filter, and also use the same drop down menu to sort. So I can sort descending and sort ascending all in that filter button in the top header row. Now with large financial data sets like this, one of the most common things that we do is to add up or sum all the numbers under a specific column. So I'm gonna hit Control N to go to the very last cell here that contains information. And right under it, I'm gonna hit 
alt equals and that will do automatically create a sum formula and select all the data points under that cell to select the entire column and then i can press enter now if i were to do that in the very first column over here so let me scroll all the way to the right and then i'm going to go to the very first column here that has information hit alt equals that will do an auto sum i can press enter and then what i can do is i can select that same cell and i can hold the shift key and go all the way to the right and then hit control r what that will do is it will it will auto fill all the selected cells with the same exact formulation that i used on the first one now let's say i'm going to scroll all the way up here let's say i wanted to add a formula here on the next empty column and i wanted to take half of this number and put it in here so i simply just do equals select the cell divide by two press enter that will do it now if i wanted to copy that information all the way down what i can do is i can select that cell Control shift end that was go all the way down to the very last cell that has information and then i would hit Control d what Control d does is out of fills all the information based on the very first cell using the same formula that i used now let me hit Control c to undo that i'm going to show you a similar way to approach this so let's say for example i were to type in this formula but the way i would do it is i would select the entire column here that I want to autofill and I want to come here into the formula bar I will type in my formula and then hit control enter that will do the exact same thing as the control D but I have to have had that formula bar selected so Excel knows where to get the information from so let's say I want to add an additional line of data into this data table I'm going to hit control down arrow to go to the very last row here I'm going to click down arrow one more time and let's say I wanted to insert today's date in it. So in order to do that, I hit control semicolon that will automatically enter today's date. I'm going to press tab, enter the next piece of information. And now let's say, for example, that I wanted to get a drop down menu of all the previous entries I had used here before. So I'm going to hit alt down arrow and I'm going to get basically a menu that shows me all the things that I've entered before in this column that allows me to just select the one that I want and then hit tab to move forward with entering more data. Now, a quick way to add borders to a selected area. Let's say, for example, I'm going to select this area here and I wanted to add a border. Control Shift ampersand is now going to add a box outline to that selected information. If I select the same data and I hit Control Shift underscore, it will now remove the outline borders created for that data set. Now, formatting is one of my favorite shortcuts to use. So let's say, for example, that I wanted this entire column to be in currency or dollar format. So I do Control Shift 4. That's going to move everything into currency format. Let's say, for example, that this one, I want it to be in percentage format. So I do Control Shift 5, and that will all move to percentage format. If I wanted this one to be in numerical format, I'm going to do Control Shift exclamation mark, and it will all be rounded up to two decimals. And if I wanted this one to be in date format, I would do Control Shift Pound. And this would make a lot more sense if I take my actual dates here and I'll select this column with the dates. And I'll do Control Shift Exclamation to change this to numerical format and then do Control Shift Pound to go back into date format. If I wanted to get very specific with the formatting, I would hit Control 1 and it will open up the format cells and I can change here exactly if I wanted to have a specific date type of format or any other type of format. I can also remove formatting altogether by hitting, selecting the, the column that I wanted to remove formatting for, hit Control Shift tilde, and it removes all the formatting or it changes it to general formatting. Now let's say I wanted to hide some columns without getting rid of the data. So I can select all the columns here I want to hide, hit Control zero, and that will hide them. I can hit Control Shift zero to unhide them or I can double click on that little thick line between the two visible columns to um, unhide them. Now I can do the same thing with uh, rows. So let's say for example I wanted to hide all these rows here. I would hit Control 9 that will hide the rows. Control Shift 9 will unhide them. Now another way to hide and unhide rows and columns is by doing grouping. 
So the way you do grouping is you select all the columns I want to group together, and then I'm going to hit Alt, Shift, right arrow. You will notice that minus icon there, letting you know that I can click on that to collapse and hide them. And then now it turns into a plus icon, which I can click on that and now expand them. Now I can also select a subgroup inside of it, hit Alt, Shift, right arrow, and create a second layer of grouping, select another subgroup, Control, Shift, right arrow, and then another layer. Notice that the numbers one through four here allow me to press one to collapse them all, and all the way to the last number four to expand them all. If I wanted to undo the grouping, I hit Control, Shift, left arrow, select the columns that are grouped together, Control, Shift, left arrow. Now select the other columns that are grouped together, Control, Shift, left arrow. It works the same way with rows. I select the rows that I want to group together, Control, Shift, right arrow, and there you go. Another great shortcut is to do Control tilde. Control tilde will allow you to show and hide the formulas inside cells. So for example, inside of every one of these cells, there's actually a formula, but I don't see it in the screen. So if I hit Control tilde, notice that instead of seeing the solution, I'm going to see the actual formula. Notice that on the date, it turns it into a number because all dates are actually numerical. I hit Control tilde one more time, and it will hide the formulas and then show the results from the information. And the last shortcut is Shift F3. So for example, let's say I wanted to do a formula here, but I'm not 100% sure what I'm supposed to enter. So I'm going to hit Shift F3, and it will open up the Insert Function screen. In the Insert Function screen, you can search anything you want to see if Excel will try to find it for you. So for example, I know there was a formula having to do with concatenate, so I'll type conca and then hit go, and then it will actually show me all the functions that contain that information. Any of the ones that I click on, it will give me a quick summary of how the syntax works. If I go ahead and select one and then click OK, notice that it will now sort of guide me with different text boxes in terms of how that formula works. So I can basically follow through and select this piece of information, enter, and then select the other piece of information, enter, and then click OK, and notice what results it gives me. So that Shift F3 is really, really useful when you're new at building formulas and you want Excel to kind of guide you to the process. And of course, if you love this video, make sure you hit like. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you have any ideas for other Excel type of videos, add that in the comments. That would be great as well. If you are an accounting person, anyone working with financial data, strongly consider taking my course. The link is in the description below somewhere. I guarantee you it's the best course on Excel you'll ever take. Guaranteed you to save you half the time of whatever it's taking you to do now. And if not, you just email me, contact me, and you will have your money back. So please take that course uh, because it'll be worth it. It'll be worth every penny for you to save time. Anyway, subscribe to the channel, share with others, and thank you.